another common thing that uh, we encounter. Um, I think everyone doesn't matter who you are, and that's team bullying. Now I remember when I was a teenager, I got picked on. Um, not really because I was transgender, because I was fat. And I could not really understand why I was being mocked. The people who mocked me was usually the really skinny kids. But sometimes you would come across the fat kids that would pick on you. And honestly, seriously, girls who were bigger than me, like fat ass. Look at your fat ass. Ha <laughs> ha, you're fat. Girl, you weigh like a hundred pounds more than me. You need to think about what you're saying. <laughs> But, um, there is a lot of that. Um, you get picked on if you're different. And it's kind of mean that people are like that. That people, you know, mistreat you. I, I remember, I remember girls making comments asking if I was a lesbian. Because I did not style my hair or wear girly clothing. Now you didn't put any lipstick on. You don't wear makeup. You don't like pin your hair up in a ponytail. You don't wear, you know, skirts. Oh my god, are you a lesbian? And I did get kind of ousted by females because they thought I w that I was a lesbian. And you know, down here in the south, I'm like, ooh, lesbian. <laughs> and I remember, you know, I got picked on because I was fat. By skinny and fat people. So suddenly, I'm like, oh, you're fat. <laughs> so there was, you know, there was a lot of that. There were some bullying. I remember hating the cafeteria. In uh, the 8th grade, I used to get picked on in the cafeteria. And the girl that used to pick on me was a skinny kid that had some sort of, like, back trouble or some sort of health condition. She never bent over and picked up anything. And she would just be so crude. Like, I'd be sitting there at the table and have my, I have my backpack in the chair and I'd be sitting there eating and she would come over there with her fat angry friend who was fatter than I and I'd pick my stuff up moving and she would like push my tray just try to push it onto the floor you know like you know if you want to sit down with me you can now I'm gonna sit here and eat and you know they would get they would get mad and, and start like threatening me. And I, you see this fort? Mm -hmm. You see this fort? Come, you see this fort? If you don't move, you're going to see this fort closer. And the problem was the school wouldn't do anything about it. You know, I would go and tell the principal, oh, I got picked on in the uh, cafeteria. You know, this girl threatened to stab me with a fort. She, picks up my stuff and moves it to the other table. She tries to knock my tray over. And they're like, well, we can assign you a seat at the front while the teacher sat. Oh, you mean the trouble zone? The place where all the bad kids have to sit? And I'm pretty sure there's still that sort of thing going on. You know, up there in the front where all the teachers sit and they keep the kids that misbehave so the teachers can keep an eye on them. I'm like, yeah, that's going to reduce my bullying. It's me sitting up there with the meaner kids. And they're back going, oh, she got in trouble. Oh, she got in trouble. And I tell them, I said, well, how about instead of punishing me, punish the ones who are doing this. You know, instead of going, well, we'll stick you up here at the front. 
where everyone would think you're a bad kid, would do something about the ones who are starting that. And they wouldn't step in and do anything. And every time they would have some sort of fecal excuse. I would go to the principal, why didn't you tell one of the teachers who was in there? Well, I did the last time, and she told me to go and tell you. Well, you don't need to get smart. I'm tired. I'm hungry. I can't eat in the cafeteria without fear of being stabbed. <laughs> oh, that's not going to happen. You're not going to get stabbed. Really? You sure? Because I don't want to end up in the hospital with a plastic fork in my... Oh, I don't want to end up with a plastic fork sticking out of my neck going, He was wrong! I swear! <laughs> but, um... You know, I don't know why. Maybe they fear a lawsuit. Maybe they fear that the bullies' parents will try to sue the school for targeting their kids. But I just remember going, this ain't really helping things. And it happens, you know, quite frequently. It happens a lot. And schools do not try to do anything about it. And then they always act surprised when the extreme happens, when a Columbine happens. When suddenly like, oh, oh my God, he shot up the school. Or, oh my God, he killed himself. Why? What will lead this poor individual to shoot up a school or kill themselves? And that is something, it really kind of, like, pisses me off. Because I'm always that sort of person that I'm looking at and going, come on, really? You know, all these kids who got bullied on, you know, gays, lesbians, transgender, he uh, heterosexual. And these kids got picked on in school. They were not, like slapped in the back of the head and just go, alright, that's it, I'm shooting everyone. And then I'm killing myself. No. There was always 10,000 warnings. And the school was like, oh, that's nothing. What, you're being picked on every day by Billy? Oh, it's nothing, Tommy, deal with it. And then suddenly next thing you know, there's Tommy with a sawed-off shotgun. With half of Billy's head blown off. Suddenly like, I don't know why he would do that. There were no signs of him doing it. And I think really, because I, when I was growing up, you were always told that if you got picked on in school, you were supposed to tell a teacher. And the teacher would do something about it. And the teacher would get on to the principal, principal, every, the adults would do something about it. Because school is supposed to be a safe place. Problem is... The schools won't really handle the situation. Or sometimes they just ignore it. You know, I went in there every day to tell them about the bullying. And there was no do something. You know, there was no, oh, we going to handle this. No, it was always, well, uh, you can come up here and eat in my office. Really? So instead of being able to eat in a cafeteria like a normal student, I have to be outcasted to the principal's office. Well, I'm going to sit here and just eat my meal all by my lonesome self. And just sort of be like on my own. Already ostracized even more than I already am. To just be that proverbial outcast hermit instead of you guys just going uh, we gotta straighten this out with them two over there because the old saying went um, I, he I heard this from a uh, a uh, son of a rabbi on um, some uh, BBC show or something like that they were talking about the holocaust and the guy said my daddy always said 
when they when they're finished going after you, they'll go after others. It had a completely different meaning, but that always kind of cling to me. Cause I, cause I know that once a bully has made you its bitch, once it has dominated your life and now you're the outcast, they're going after other people. And it is terrifying that a kid goes to school and they tell teachers and principals and vice principals and coaches, hey, this person keeps picking on me. This person keeps threatening me. This person won't let me sit at a table and eat because they want to start a fight. You know, do something about it. Get to the bottom of it. Straighten the shit out. Don't just say, well, we'll just take you over here and lock you up. No, step up to it. Try to get on to the individual. Because it's not helping the student. If the student is the one being punished, then the bully isn't. Because that builds up a lot of rage. That builds up a lot of sadness and it builds up resentment. But, you know, I, I don't know. I honestly don't know why. I can't, for the life of me, fathom why the school never did anything. But there was times when I was growing up in that school. There were times where I, where I was the victim, but I felt like I was also the enemy. And I felt like every time I was being picked on and mistreated, every time I said something to the higher authorities, you know, they would always turn around and just go, well, you must have did something to it. You, know, you must have angered them. You're, you're the bad individual in this story. You know. And they just really don't. And I remember actually telling the principal. Yes, I said. I said, now what if she stabs me with a fork? Oh, that's not going to happen, you know. She won't do that. How would you know? I said, what are you going to say if I'm in the hospital with a stab wound? And I'm sitting there going, yeah, yeah, you remember I told you this? Like a dozen times that this was going to happen. And you just said, oh, you can stay up here and eat in my office. Yeah, how about uh, eyeballing her? How about straightening them out? What I ended up doing was... I ended up having my mom come and pick me up at lunchtime. Well, bring it... She, she would... In the beginning, she would bring me something to eat. <coughs> at lunchtime, and I would eat in the car. But I got picked on for that too. Cause suddenly, kid, suddenly those same girls will get angry. Oh, you think you're too good to eat in the cafeteria? Oh, my mama didn't come and bring me no Wendy's meal. And again, I will go and tell them, hey, you know, these girls are. These girls would. Like grab my backpack and throw it over and throw it out the uh, second story window, and I had to leave the classroom and go and get it. And I told the principal that, I told the teacher that. Nothing got done. Nothing. Girl brings a big bottle of aspirin to school. This was after that zero tolerance thing I signed. Girl bought a big ass 
big ass bottle of aspirin to school. And she's like, yes, 